In going through our correspondence this morning, we were dismayed to discover your letter left unanswered, particularly since we were so pleased with the directness of your question, why all this sudden fuss from women about equal rights? Well, we must point out that the fuss did not come about suddenly. As a matter of fact, women were organizing to bring equality for over a century before. <clears throat> and how the fuss of today echoes that of Eros past. The um, appropriate duties and influence of woman are clearly stated in the New Testament. Now, those duties and that influence are unobtrusive and private. But they are the source of mighty power, for the power of woman is in her dependence, flowing from a consciousness of that weakness which God has given her for her protection. <laughs> we are told that the uh, power of woman is in her dependence, flowing from that weakness which uh, God has given her. Well, if, uh, if physical weakness is alluded to, I cheerfully concede the superiority. If brute force is what my brethren are claiming, I'm willing to let them have all the honor they deserve. But if they mean to intimate that mental or moral weakness belongs to woman more than to man, I heartily disclaim the charge. And then, her influence, private and unobtrusive, is the source of mighty power. This has ever been the flattering language of man since he, since he laid aside the whip. Alas, woman has too well learned the lesson. She has surrendered her dearest rights and been satisfied with the, the privileges which man has assumed to give her. She has been amused by a show of power while man has absorbed all the reality unto himself. Now, I ask no favors for my sex. I surrender not our claim to equality. All I ask of our brethren is that they will take their feet from off our necks and permit us to stand upright on that ground which God designed us to occupy. If he has not given us the rights which have, as I perceive, been wrested from us, why, we shall soon give evidence of our inferiority and shrink back into that obscurity which man has assigned us as our appropriate sphere. We invite your attention to the dangers which at present seem to threaten the female character with widespread and permanent injury. <laughs> we appreciate the unostentatious efforts of women at home and abroad in advancing the cause of religion. But when she takes on the place and tone of a man as a public reformer, why, her character becomes unnatural. <laughs>
here in Seneca Falls, New York, in this year of 1848, we women wish to set forth a declaration of sentiments. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, and that to secure these rights, governments are instituted deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Now, in view of the fact that women do feel themselves fraudulently deprived of their most sacred rights, we insist that they have immediate admission to all the rights and privileges which belong to them as citizens of the United States. Be it resolved that while we would not undervalue other methods, the right to vote for women, in our opinion, is the cornerstone of this enterprise. Since we do not seek to protect woman, but rather to place her in a position to protect herself. <clears throat> and be it finally resolved that it is as absurd to deny all women their civil rights because the cares of household and family take up all the time of some, as it would be to exclude the whole male sex from Congress because some men are sailors or soldiers in active service or merchants whose business requires all their attention and energies. In entering upon this great work before us, we anticipate no small amount of misconception, misrepresentation, and ridicule. But we shall do everything in our power to effect our object.
women in this congregation as there is men? Oh, Josiah Allen's wife, he just gets so worked up about rights. Oh. Cannot deny that men and women do work side by side. Day oh, by indeed, indeed. <laughs> the men have said that when it comes to church work, women has a perfect right to help. Yeah. To do half the work. Do yeah. right. Uh -huh. Or to do all the work. But uh, when it comes to them hard and arduous duties, like uh, like drawing salaries with them, <laughs> setting in on church conferences and conventions with them, well, there the line has to be drawn. But I can stand on this barrel all day, scrubbing the ceiling, scared to death of falling. Well, Josiah and... Allen's wife, that is just something altogether different than trying to mount up on a rostrum, setting in on a church conference. What? Well, I should think that you would be able to see that them high duties are for lay men. Yeah, lay men don't mean women. Uh -uh. No, no, but lay men <laughs> does mean women when it comes to scrubbing and drowning around. Well, it has long been settled to be so. And who settled it? Well, the men. Yeah, oh, well, <laughs> it seems to take a knack to know just when that word Lay men means men, and women it means women. Oh, that, 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 that is so. Yeah. You see, it takes a man's mind to grab the woman. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> well, and, and it's just not only in matters regarding the church. No. Uh, now, you take that word man in the Declaration of Independence. Now, that word man in that declaration, that means men some of the time, and then some of the time it means men and women both. Oh, I see. I see. It takes deep minds to follow just to a hair where that division is made. <laughs> now, you take that clause, all men are born free and equal. Well, you see, one half of that clause means men, and the other half means men and women both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, in order to understand them words perfect, you have just... Uh, uh, you have got to divide the text. Yeah, divide the text. <laughs> um, see, all men are born. <laughs> that means men and women both. I mean, men and women are both born, but just you know, nobody's going to deny that. No. <laughs> and then, free and equal, that means men only. Anybody could see that. <laughs> You do see it. I do. I see a great deal, Serena Fogg. Oh, I'm so glad. Because you see, it's necessary that we women get on with our duties. With our duties. Well, you know, um, teaching in a church Sabbath mm -hmm. school, um, getting up charitable organizations, uh, raising money, um, just, um, uh, you know, carrying on with no help from the male <laughs> set. <laughs> well, leaving them free to look after their house. Their house, Serena. Yeah. Well, um, salaries, um, office, uh, making the laws that bind both sexes, and uh, and just uh, just ruling things generally. <laughs> oh, you do finally see. I do see, Serena. I see that the men are fine at making the rules, and the women are fine at scrubbing the ceiling. <laughs> Exactly. exactly. Okay. And what a grief it is to the male sect to see women trying to mount up on rostrums, setting in on church conferences all across this land. A grief indeed, Serena. <laughs> when women start mounting rostrums all across this land, they're going to have their own ideas about when men means men and when it means men and women. And then maybe, just maybe, we'll all be free and equal. <laughs> bring before you on this occasion is the individuality of each human soul. Our American idea, individual citizenship, the right to individual conscience and judgment. No matter how much woman may prefer to lean, 
to be supported or protected, no how much man may desire to have her do so, she must make the voyage of life alone. And for safety in an emergency, she must know something of the laws of navigation. <laughs> this talk of sheltering women from the fierce storms of life is the sheerest mockery. They blow upon her from every point of the compass, just as they do upon man, but with far more fatal results. For he has been taught to defend himself, to resist, and to conquer. But when all artificial trammels are removed, and women are recognized as individuals, responsible for their own environments, thoroughly educated for every position in life they may be called to fill, guided by their own conscience and judgment, and trained to self-protection by a healthy development of the muscular system, and use of the weapons of self-defense, and stimulated to self-support by an understanding of the business world, and the pleasures which pecuniary independence must ever give. When women are trained in this way, they will, in a measure, be prepared for those years of solitude which come to all, whether prepared or otherwise. to journey out into the world with him. When the clay pot thought that it would be wiser to stay close to the fireplace, he knew that away from home he might easily break. But the iron pot promised to walk by his side and to protect him from any harm. And so the clay pot consented. Well, clippity-clop they went, each on his three little legs, first to one side and then the other, bumping each other all the way. Well, that sort of rough companionship was just too much for the clay pot to bear. Suddenly, he cracked, and with the next bump, he was smashed into bits. Moral, equals make the best friends. <laughs> Uh, so we'd like to, uh, first of all, we've got some questions and 
and um, share some memories or whatever. Anyway, who, who's got a question or comment or something? Yes. Well, I'll just say, now people understand why I was inspired in the 70s to do things, because they were around. <laughs>
several years, and, and I arrived in town just raring to go, just, just let, me, let me get at something. <laughs> so, uh, so I was really already tuned into a lot of the issues that were swirling around. So when we were looking at this history, um, I was definitely thinking about what was happening. And it's really interesting to look around and see so many of your faces here, those of us who and, and some of us are still carrying on yes. <laughs> and, doing the, and fighting the good battle, so we appreciate that. Um, so, what else? Anybody else got any? Well, I just wanted to say that uh, one of the key arguments in the Equal Rights Amendment uh, debates was that women were superior. They didn't need to be equal because they were already superior. So that was just exactly like you said. It's an argument that had recirculated. Yeah, so, so I'm not sure how much of these, when, when we were choosing these, I have to tell you, when we were choosing these things or what, what we were going to do tonight, it had to be, what can we do? <laughs> Given our changing faces and uh, energy and what could we actually hope that we could re-memorize and, and so forth. And so um, I think that, you know, I, I'm not sure that, that these are necessarily things that would resonate today. And I'm very happy to know that how many changes have occurred. And I have to say, we were very, we were very welcomed around the United States because Washington State was looked upon as a real leader in the Equal Rights Amendment. I mean, we passed that, we passed that amendment. There, but it passed, <laughs> and uh, and then we started putting in, uh, then we started, uh, in, you know, initiating laws to to um, live up to that, and so that was respected all around the United States. So when we came, and, and then I think we were one of the first ones to talk about comparable work, and so there were just a lot of things going on in Washington State that when we went around the country, we could. You know, I think one of my favorite lines in the show we just did was the anti-suffrage when he said, women are capable, they can't bear arms, <laughs> they can't be in the police force, they can't protect the public protection against fire. I mean, just that has been you know, a huge change. So there has been progress. There have been some huge changes made, yes. Uh, what you just said about resonating resonated with me. I, I teach at Marshall Middle School. And one thing I do to try to incorporate something of my feminism there is that uh, every Halloween I dress up as Susan B. Anthony. <laughs> All right. The first year I had a, a little sticker that said, Oh, my name is S. B. Anthony, and nobody got it. <laughs> so the next year I put um, Susan. Yeah, Susan B. Anthony, and they still weren't getting it. One seventh grader said, oh, I know who you are. I know who you are, Miss M. I said, oh, good, who? She said, I, you are Mary Poppins. where the mother comes back sure. from the southern rally. But to have that be her only content yeah. where women's <laughs> rights, that's <laughs> just my <mind> body. <laughs> we have the umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, I did this once with my daughters, uh, and then I did it again with my granddaughter. So next to Susan B. Anthony's birthday, if you have any kids in school, you take cupcakes to the school, and you say, you go try to get on Susan B. Anthony's birthday, because everybody's talking Lincoln and Francis, Washington, everything. And I say, okay, now you know about George B. Washington, he freed everybody, etc. right? Well, this is what George B. Washington did. I passed around the things to about half of the boys. <laughs> half of the boys got cupcakes. And I said, oh, we didn't give everybody in? That's when Abraham Lincoln came along and he said, huh. whatever. So then I gave it to the rest of the boys. And I said, then Susan B. Anthony was around there and she said, this isn't right. Who didn't get cupcakes? And all the girls raised their hands. <laughs> and I said, that's right. That's what Susan B. Anthony did. She got you all cupcakes. <laughs> But they all talked about it a whole lot. That's a great idea. That's terrific. That's terrific. And by the way, um, <coughs> talking about firefighting, one thing or another, my daughter is a captain in the Los Angeles City Fire Department. <laughs> So yes, we, we have made incredible changes, changes that we should feel proud of. 
but we all know there's a lot yet to be done. Don't we? Well, we still don't have an equal rights amendment. No, we don't. No. We have a state, we have a state, a state one, but not a national. No. Yeah. Did you know, there are only 20 of the 60 states that are, have equal rights for women. Only 20. Only 20. Can I tell a story about that? Of course. Uh, yeah. Mary Ellen Hudgens was an intern in the Women's Council. And uh, after that, she went to law school, graduated as number one in her uh, law school class, and then took on, under the State Equal Rights Amendment, women's athletics at WSU and won. And if we hadn't had an Equal Rights Amendment, that would not have been possible. So we were, we were one of the few states that have a state equal rights amendment, and we were the 30th state to pass the federal equal rights amendment, but, but there weren't enough states, you know, for that to come into effect. 38, and there's only 35 passed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we used to use the slogan, we all live in an unratified country, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even though we got a state. Yeah. Yeah. But our state passed it, we were the 30th state, we passed it on the anniversary when Congress passed it to the states to be ratified. Because uh, Martha Griffith called the Women's Council just to make sure, did it really pass it? And she told us that. And another thing, of course, when Title IX passed, Pat and I also did a, a show uh, for that. It was a fashion show. <laughs> but, well. You'd have to, you'd have to be in there. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we did, a, we did a, a show, you know, talking about the Title IX, and of course, boy, we really see the the, the difference in that today. I mean, um, you know, it's just there was a day when we never saw any women on the sports page at all. So, you know, there have been changes. Title IX, I get really upset about Title IX because. The men were most concerned about the sports issue, so everyone thinks Title IX is about sports. It's about 20, it's about 24 areas that it covers in education, and yet everyone thinks but it's about was, sports. But that was there was such a huge fuss about that. Yeah. Remember, it would, if women had equal sports, then the, the universities would yeah. crash because yeah. they wouldn't have yeah. football money. I mean, that was the one. In our school needed. district. I, I remember one of the women that was so dedicated to equal rights for the girls in the district. She went to the school district meeting, and she said, we, all we want is our half for the girls. And, and it happened to be sports they were talking about. And they said, well, we don't have the money. And she said, just take the budget and cut it in half and give us <laughs> said we live in an unratified country and that brings to mind that in a way we are we need to be concerned about women and girls in other countries and there is a United Nations Convention on the elimination of all forms of discrimination yeah. against women called CEDAW and uh, the president of the United States I think Jimmy Carter signed it Oh, way back when he was president. And, uh, but the U.S. Senate has never ratified it. And there are several states that have now endorsed it. And finally, Washington did after five years of trying. So we are on record as supporting that. But, uh, but that is an issue in the U.S. Senate. So I encourage that. That's another step forward that we all need to take and work on in our Congress. You know? So I first saw you in LA, I think in 74 or 75. Oh my gosh. Uh, in the Navy down there, and uh, I heard you were there, so I went up to see you. But in over 20 years in the Navy, several of my commands, many of my commands, had no women at all. And it was uh, awkward when I was stationed someplace where there were women. I wasn't used to it. But um, in 80, Three to eighty-five. I was on board a ship responsible for converting and repairing that ship, and one of my jobs. And I didn't understand. Two years ago, we need to, to get this paper finished. We couldn't get the paper finished. Well, it was a conversion to make the ship ready for women. And oh. the conversion was done, but I wasn't supposed to put the paper in. And I finally was oh. told by somebody later that said, the captain doesn't want women on board. Do not submit the paper. Oh. So that's 85. Oh. That's 85. Oh. 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 
uh, and several instances, um, women really abused in the military, and some I was able to wage some kind of a fight for, but uh, just, uh, it's not over. No, it's not. Well, thank you for whatever you did. Um, my daughter is, of course, I said, is in the fire department in Los Angeles, and they're one of the better departments in terms of affirmative action with women and, and minorities and so forth, trying to trying to make the, the department representative of the community at large. But, you know, when she first, first started, there was, you know, it was difficult in terms of, you know, the, you go in and you, as a firefighter, you're sleeping in the, in the uh, firehouse and you're, and you're very working very close with all of these people. And the interesting thing now is that what she says is there's just a few old guard men that are still, you know, sort of have their heads back someplace else. But, but that almost all of the young men that come on, it's no big deal. Not a big deal at all. So I think that, that is encouraging in terms of, 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 of a new generation of, of how, how um, these roles of, of women and men are seen. You, you mentioned in the video that you visited uh, in the 70s, I guess, Fort Lewis a number of times. Yes, we did. What were the, what were the reactions? Well, the they were, uh, uh, I remember the first time we went, somebody saying, hey, where are your army boots? You know, yeah. there was this image of, and we just said we'd left them backstage or some kind. But actually, we ended up having very, very positive, and that's the secret of theater. And, and uh, humor, and uh, you know, if you want to talk to just us, it's very different. But if you do want to, to reach other people, uh, you know, you have to try to meet them where they are, at least for the start. You know, and, and that's really, I think, was the secret of theater, and, and the, uh, you know, we had some humor here and there, but still it was pretty hard hitting, they got it, but we never did a show without having a discussion after. So I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that we, you know, would sit down and talk, and they had a lot of questions, and it was it was uh, there it was touching actually once they kind of relaxed and started talking about it. And if I remember one thing, a young a young guy said uh, something about, well, you know, I like my women, I like I like them to have soft hands, and and uh, uh, I think Ryan one of us said, well. Uh, did your mother have soft hands? Mm. And uh, no, you know, she worked very hard. So, I mean, we, we had, it, it was always a bit of a challenge. I was always a little nervous. I think we all were a little. But it was, yeah, it, was it was really, once you start talking and we're just, you know, we have brothers and husbands and kids and, you Well, know. and you know, the thing is, we, 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 we were very conscious of what we looked like. We were very, we were, we were motherly. We were ladylike. We had the so very simple dresses. We were long dresses. We were we were uh, we were the kind of women that that most of them had been bought, bought, uh, brought up to respect. So they would at least let, be quiet <laughs> and let us, let us talk. Let us do our thing. And um, and then I think they just got one over. And and it, uh, we have a, a trifle there of three programs. And, we had one pro the, the first program that we developed to take around for the Equal Rights Amendment was was the one that really was designed not only to encourage women to you know to keep up the good fight but also to reach out to to people who were not necessarily part of the movement and that's the one that we often did at at uh, Fort Lewis and I think we might have done the one on marriage at Fort Lewis too because that would definitely get get interest in terms of but the, the, the last program we developed, Women in Power, that really was developed as a, as a morale builder and booster for, for the women's Us. groups around the country. And uh, because we realized that that, that was something that, that they would, would appreciate. So that was for the, the, the committed forces. And there's something else, and that's Denise and the music. Yeah. I mean, when you hear, in fact, when we started doing this, we, we were trying to figure what we were going to do, and then we got together. And, Denise started playing the guitar and singing. Oh, it was the first time I kind of remember the emotional impact of her voice. I mean, the way she plays and the way she sings, she could say, We're going to kill you, so and so. <laughs> <laughs> what she says, you know, they listen and they nod. Yeah. <laughs> so music really does transcend. I mean, it's, you know, we believe that about the arts generally. But, 
she was one who didn't think there was any reason she couldn't do whatever she wanted to do, and she did it. And she told me a lot of those things that she had to put up with, but it didn't bother her. She was still a lady. She rode side saddle. She had my dad on the back and the new baby in front, and away they went and over the logs and gone. And she carried a gun a lot of the time because of the wildlife. She didn't see anything different. She could handle just about anything the men could. And she was a little big woman, but she did it. And uh, as the years went by, she outlived one husband and then another one. <laughs> she was a businesswoman. She ran apartment houses. She had a hotel here early on that catered to loggers, and she was a good cook, and that's why they all had their room and board there. And she just always said, well, if they can do it, so can we. Right on. And she did. I think this was, this was one of the things that we also discovered when we read uh, any, 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 any reminiscences or diaries or letters from pioneer women. They were very, very, you know, they, they were put into a position where they had to do a lot of things. And maybe they came from the East Coast and didn't, they hadn't thought they were ever going to have to do it, but you're faced with it and you got to do it. And they stepped up and, and were very, very independent and strong in many ways. And I tell you, one of the, uh, another kind of revelation to us is that we uh, were booked into Salt Lake City um, at the so, university <laughs> there. And there was, I think, I think Pat, you found the article, when we were just getting on the air, there was this newspaper article about how the, you know, the works of Satan were coming to Salt Lake City. <laughs> uh, but I'll tell you, it was an amazing experience for us. Lots, I don't know how many women showed up, but the place was packed with women, and many of them had said they, they um, you know, had to kind of get away quietly. The, not everybody knew where they were. But they were so strong and uh, supportive and kind of desperate. But it was, it was a weird, wonderful time. Yeah, so we performed a, a number of times in Salt Lake, and it was, it was very exciting. But I have to say that some of the women that had arranged that paid for it. Very, absolutely. Were, Sonia, they were, Sonia was lost. the publicity. Yeah, yeah, but, and it was, uh, it was very sad, the, the final outcome of it. Oh, oh, oh. They were yeah. from the church? Um, well, well and the, the, woman, the woman that actually got us there, uh, um, she actually was kicked out of her position, ultimately, and, and basically uh, ostracized from, from, I don't know if she was actually kicked out of the church, but she was certainly ostracized from so when I say a lot of these women, they were so confident that that they, they were that this was right, and if they could only, they, if, if if they bat, you know, they stick together and talk to the, out, that that others would see the light, and it just didn't happen. I mean, they were. They and were, they kept asking us back. Well, they were dropped off. You just reminded me of 1975 Ellensburg. Oh yeah. Women from the Mormon Church were bringing up. Yes. to stand up and vote with us as men from the church took their picture. Mm -hmm. I suspect they were... 77. 77. 77? Yeah. Okay. Okay, unless there is a very pressing question, I, I, I think maybe... And you will stay for a few minutes. And we will stay for, for a few minutes. Thank you so much. So much. We really do.